good evening and thank you for joining me tonight on Ask Aunt Tricia. I am so excited tonight because I have a very special guest for you tonight. I met this guy through social media and I saw him singing. And so that right there is an automatic attraction because I love people who know how to sing. His name is Norman Lee. He produces Divas Simply Quarantine for Cheryl Lee Ralph, as well as her show, Divas Simply Singing, an HIV fundraiser. He's also a media technology consultant, producer, and writer. And he has taken time out of his busy schedule to talk to us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my new friend, Mr. Norman Lee. Hi, Norman. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. What an introduction. <laughs> Well, yes, yes, that's the kind of introduction you get on this show from me because I appreciate people with talents and gifts and intelligence, and I just want to make you shine when you can. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as I was saying, I saw you uh, on social media, and I think one of my favorite things about you and your posts is that you always have a picture of you and your dog yeah. and your dog has these expressions on his face like am i getting paid for this right. he is a whole character <laughs> alex is a mood he is a mood <laughs> he hates the camera though and i just try to make him you know i'm like come on get in this picture and he just he oh he rolls his eyes he is a human being. Yes, he is. And we can see it in the picture. And that's why it's so funny. And sometimes it just looks like he's saying, OK, we're doing this again. I don't know how many times I have to tell you right. I don't want to take this picture. <laughs> oh, I love the ones where he gives me side eye. He's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then the other pictures I love. You're always on a plane going somewhere. Now, where do you be going, Norman? I, I, I want to know. Well, so I had a day job where I traveled a lot. I was a, a, a management consultant. So I did, and some of my projects meant I was a road warrior. I was on the plane from LA to New York, LA to Charlotte, LA, Chicago, Minneapolis, you know, just oh. all. So every Sunday I'd fly out and every Thursday I'd fly home. And so um, the reason why I posted the, you know, I would put an inspirational quote, I'd take some cool picture of the plane or yeah. something. Um, it, it was one to kill the time because I was bored to death, just <laughs> all the time, just traveling. But the other part was it was my way to communicate to my mother that I was on the plane and I landed safely. Right. So I was usually up super early. And so I didn't want to bother her rest or anything like that. So I would just make a social media post. So when she woke up and she saw social media, she knew I was on plane. So it was my code to her, but I made it an enjoyable little photo project. <laughs> that, that's absolutely brilliant and very smart. So yeah, I'm sure she enjoyed seeing that you were there safely and back safely, but the rest of us got to enjoy the comedic side of it and see your adventurous life. And we're always, you know, well, me, since I'm nosy, I'm all like, where the hell are you going now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoy writing about my travel experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know my chair and you know the baby team and you know just all the stuff that you would you know encounter when you're traveling so right 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 now i also enjoy look this i guess you if they had three strikes they could now you have three check marks because i also enjoy your singing and you don't post a lot of those but you sneak in a few of them sometime and i'll be sitting there like where in the hell how come I didn't know this child can <laughs> sing like this? You know, I start sounding like my grandmama. Boy, when you started doing all this stuff? Well, you know, singing for me was a late discovery. It happened in my late 20s. Um, and it was at church. I was humming. Uh -huh. And somebody in the choir 
was like, oh, I'm telling the music director. I'm like, what are you telling him? I'm like, what you? You know, and I'm looking like, what? <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I worked in the television department. I run cameras and stuff. I wasn't, you know. Yeah. And you just heard me humming. Stop it. So they told the music director that they heard me humming and I should audition for the choir. And I'm like, no, I'm really good. But, you know, you know, I sing in the shower. I'm good. Yeah. Know? And uh, so, yeah, after that, the music director approached me, was like, sing something. I'm like, sing nothing. You know, and then one, if you put me on the spot, it's just over. I don't, I, I can't. So after much coercion, I sang something and she was like, okay, come to rehearsal Tuesday. <laughs> And so, you know, I'm thinking, I don't, where, where do people do this kind of stuff at? You know, I don't, yeah. So I didn't really have the confidence or, or even thought that I knew how to sing. And I enjoyed music. I remember as a kid listening to my dad's records, he had records piled up to here and yeah. lay in front of the speaker. And I would listen to Luther Vandross. And yes. All of the people that just, and yeah, I just had this, you know, love for music. And so um, started singing in the choir, and the next thing you know, I'm on the praise team, and the next thing you know, I'm leading worship. I'm like, <laughs> next thing you know, you leading. <laughs> right. So, you know, I just, it, it, it just was one of those things. So then when I moved to uh, LA from Chicago, I really wasn't, you know, singing actively because I had sung in church and, you know, church events and different things like that, which would be mm -hmm. about nine or 10 services a week. So then I get to LA and a more normal Sunday schedule and I didn't get involved in like you know music ministry or anything like that and then a buddy of mine um well actually I'll step back real quick when I moved to California I found out I had really bad allergies so my oh. tops were swollen the entire time <gasps> here and so um wow. my doctors and I decided to have them removed because it was starting to block my airways when I sleep so at the age of 30, I had my tonsils taken out. Whoa. I felt like the oldest person that probably had their tonsils taken out. Of <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think so. So after that, I never sung because I remember one time singing, like, you know, in the house or whatever, and I felt the sharp pain in my throat. And I was like, really? Do that again. So I never sang. And then I was somewhere and I was humming and somebody heard me humming. Oh, actually, I was at Diva Simply Singing, to be honest. Um, and they were up rehearsing and I was back there singing. Well, I do the voiceover for the show. You know, I'm the guy who announces. Oh, it. okay. Um, and so he heard me and he came over. He said, is that you humming? And I was like, oh, and the microphone was on. So I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your rehearsal. I'm so he said, no. He says, you filled that in. So oh, your harmony is amazing. We should talk. And then I'm like. Okay. <laughs> Here I'm we go again. To, here we go again. And so uh, he was actually a vocal coach and he used to uh, uh, sing with Tina Marie. And wow. He worked with me to get my voice rehabilitated. And then um, he says, you know, you sound a lot like Luther. You should do Luther Vandross songs. And I'm like, you don't have to tell me that to make me come to your class. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you know, I had went through all of those iterations with confidence and different things like that. And so yeah. after working with him and when I sang my first Luther Vandross song I literally had tears in my eyes because I just never thought in, in a million years I would sing you know a Luther Vandross song so wow. yeah so then after that I would just sing at little events and you know he called me here to do something and we opened for Fantasia uh one year in Long Beach mm. and oh so I mean we we had some really fun times and so uh, sometimes I'll go to his events and sing and those are when those videos pop up on the internet you know of me oh, singing oh yeah yeah so, yeah. So wow. but I'm getting, out more, I'm getting out more and singing and then doing little stuff. You talk about an adventurous life. That is just too much fun for me to handle. <laughs> well, you know what? I, one thing I've, I really am, am so grateful and so blessed is that I'm able to sort of play on both sides of the fence, as I call it. I'm able yeah. to a corporate job and, and number crunch and manage projects. But then I get to play. I get to create. I get to go to Mexico and go to art class. I get to yeah. sing at a concert. I get to just create or produce or write. And so um, I've just been blessed to do both. Um, That's so funny that you just said that because as you're saying that, I'm looking at my own life in my head. That's exactly what I used to do. 
I had a full-time job and then I would do all my entertainment ex extracurricular activities. You know, I started out by happenstance. I was uh, um, at the time a hairstylist and one of my clients used to be a talent assistant. And most of my clients always loved to just hang out with me because I was always talking entertainment. I was the national inquirer in the beauty salon. And so when she would hear me talking about entertainment that one day is she was sick and she said, hey, Patricia, I need a favor. I do this thing called talent assistant where you go to an event and you, you walk the talent around and show them everywhere, you know, at the location so they don't feel lost or alone or whatever. Can you go fill in for me? And I'm like, what? And so I just said, okay, yeah, I'll go. And she said, all you have to do is just wear something cute, you know, um, after five and just be presentable and, you know, nice and quiet. So I go and it was lo and behold, Diva Simply Singing. And um, I got to see that show, which is so ironic that you work on that show. That's and awesome. that was one of my first talent assistant positions. And I had the best time in my life. You know, it was just so mind blowing. I saw every celebrity you could think of, the whinings. Oh, Shirley Ralph. I even met Cicely Tyson. I, I mean, it was just a uh, Cab Calloway. To, oh, I'm telling my age. You know, it was a whole bunch of people. This was like the early 90s. And I never had so much fun. That was when I first saw Jennifer Lewis and I loved her immediately, you know, and just so many people. So this is really a full circle moment for me. Wow, that is so awesome. And, and I've been with the show for 15 years and we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the show. Wow. Yeah. And so we were debating on whether or not we were going to actually have it. And um, Cheryl, I and the other producers got together and said, you know, we're going to do this virtually. And so we're going to do this show virtually this year. And yeah, you, at 30 years, you have to have it by any means necessary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, just blessed to be even in that number, you know, because I started with the show. Um, Cheryl heard my speaking voice. Um, a friend of mine had referred her to me to record her commercial. So I recorded the commercial for her. And I think it was about maybe a week after she recorded the commercial, she realized that there was a mistake in the commercial. So she was not in town. And so I had to record the last part. It was a little sponsor tag down at the end. Mm -hmm. And what she didn't know about me, because when she came to record, I just did it for her and you know she went on her way was that I had been doing voiceover since I was 13 years old. I had been reading for commercials at the church in the production department. Wow. So she was like, you have a great voice. You need to come be a part of my show. And I filled in for her brother, who was the voice of her show. He was the voice of God in the show, announcing all of the different acts. Uh -huh. And uh, he uh, was actually in a play and couldn't do the first half of the show. So I did the first half of the show for him. And then he came in and took the mic. And so it was like maybe an hour after he had taken the mic, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come backstage. And so I come backstage and Cheryl was like, oh, you can give my brother the mic now. And I was like, oh yeah, I did that about an hour ago. She was like, no, I just heard you a few minutes ago. And I was like, no, that's your brother. <laughs> and so come to find out, we I, I had I'd never seen him perform. I never saw him do the voiceover, but we sounded just alike. Wow. And so when he came on the mic, we were all standing there. She said, oh, that's not you. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, so, <laughs> and then I came back the next year. And then next, thing you know, I would I voice the whole show. And then there's, I became a stage manager and then ultimately worked my way into producer of the show. This is just really blowing my mind because we have so much in common that I didn't even realize. I, too, used to do the church announcements and things like that. And all the people on the staff were like, let Patricia do it. Come do these announcements. And I'm sitting here thinking, who told y'all I could do this, you know? <laughs> and they were like, no, we heard you speak before. I'm like, 
when and where, because I'm not aware of all of this that has been going on, but that is how I got into it as well. You know, I would just, I wanted to do announcing in, in high school though, you know, because at halftime, we used to have the announcing uh, for the games and things like that. And my speech and drama teacher was over that. And uh, apparently there were other people way better than me, which is the God's honest truth. But every now and then, again, she would let me do just a little part of it and I would get a chance to practice. But outside of that, I just, you know, I would do the school announcements. She would let me do that. And she was like, oh yeah, Trisha, I didn't realize that you do sound pretty good doing that. And so that's how I got into doing stuff like that, but not at your level, but speaking <laughs> in general. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it just, it's fascinating. Um, I, I, I studied radio and television in, in high school. And so our, our high school had, uh, you know, a closed circuit radio station and different things like that. And um, I don't know if you remember Doug Banks. But Doug yeah. Banks, you know, yeah. Radio personality. Yeah. And, he was in Chicago on radio and at WGCI. And so I was doing my radio show at the school and I remember him walking through the door and I see him and I'm in the middle of announcing a song. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like he talking, he talking. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> because I was so enamored with Doug Banks. Wow. And he um, actually got me an internship in WPI in high school. I was in high school. Internships didn't happen for, you know, people until their junior year of college. Mm -hmm. And so he talked to Marv Dyson, the president and general manager of the radio station, and they brought me in and I interned in promotions and programming. Um, I got to do some stuff on the air. I got to do, you know, a lot of things. And so um, that was actually the second radio station I actually ever worked at in my life because the church that I was a part of had a television station, I'm mean, sorry, a television show mm -hmm. and had a radio station. Oh. And so at the age of 13, I was, um, my mother worked at the church. So I would be at the church sometimes over the summer and I would go up and watch them produce the show. And I'm watching them editing and seeing all the pictures flying and it just fascinated me. So one of the announcers for the show was standing in the booth recording the voiceover for the show. And I'm behind the door mocking her and so she's Liberty Temple Full Gospel Church. And I'm over there, Liberty Temple Full Gospel Church. <laughs> and so the pastor was on the opposite side of the door. I didn't see him. And he heard me and he was like, get him a script. He sounds good. I read a script. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I started doing voiceover, just, you know, reading scripts every week. And then when the church got the radio station, um, I came in and recorded commercials and then became the station voice you know 1470 wcfj fort heights wow. so yeah it just started there and then from there on that's it it's i'm telling you this is just blowing oh. my mind this whole conversation so i i don't know why i keep having to go into my flashback memories but when i um went back to school I saw this ad in the paper for a part-time board operator at a radio station, but it was a news talk radio station. Wow. And I sent my resume and the guy called me in and, you know, I really didn't have high hopes because after I got the call and I did the research and I found out it was news talk and I'm thinking, oh, these people are not gonna hire me. So wow. I walked through the door and it was almost like love at first sight. Me and this guy connected immediately. And he was a middle-aged white guy, but we just both had this look on our eyes like, yes, you know, I, I just can't even explain it. And I was hired immediately. And so he trained me and everything. And I had the opportunity one time, his uh guy who did his commercials didn't show up. And so he said, I, I don't have time. I got to go to town. I need this done. I said, oh, I'll do it for you. So you know, I do this. I said, yeah. And so I did a 30 second spot for him and everybody in the, all the people who had shows was like, who is the new person that did this commercial? We want her to do our commercial. I was like, <laughs> 
How it starts. They didn't even know I was black. That's what was the funniest part. <laughs> they were like, that was you? <laughs> <laughs> that is so uh, awesome. Yeah. That is so awesome. But that's how it starts. It's yeah. just a little opportunity. And I remember going back and listening to their first commercial I ever wrote. I was like, what did they do? <laughs> they were like, oh, you sounded great. I'm like, really? <laughs> when we used to have um answering machines right and i used to put my message on my machine mm-hmm. and when i would get home from work people would just hang up i would hear click click i, I swear to god for years click and so voice. <laughs> one day i was there I, I mean my mom called she said hey who was that white lady at your house i'm like what are you talking about I called your answering machine and it's a white lady on there. I said, mama, that's me. <laughs> that is, you know, people don't realize that's really the best confident, the compliment you can get. <laughs> <laughs> who, who that white person, who that white person on your phone? <laughs> I kid you not. I would, my friends would say, Trisha, who that, why you got that white lady doing your answering machine? I'm like, what is wrong with you people? That is me. And it would just blow their minds. But the fact that I would just hear a click, I mean, I wish I had it on tape today. Click, oh, click, click, click. They would just hang up immediately. Man, this has been just an interesting conversation and so much fun. But this is how things like that happen. They happen in divine orchestration, in my opinion. I think that, you know, when you're supposed to connect to something, you do. And it happens in the strangest ways. It's like, who thought this up? Who wrote this? (laughs) (laughs) And what movie am I playing in, you know? Because I am having an out-of-body experience right now because this day has just been crazy. Like I told you, my my clip for my camera broke. I have a rubber band around my tripod. Then my AirPods didn't work, so I'm plugged in. And it's just been a crazy day. And, you know, I just thank you for being here. Huh? I said, and the show has to go on, right? By any means. Even with the rubber bands. By any means <laughs> necessary. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So oh, my God. Let's just get started. Okay, so the first question that I have to ask is, what is the best advice that you've ever given someone? The best advice that I've ever given someone has been to always consider what you know over what you feel. And the reason I say that um, is because oftentimes our feelings are fleeting. Our feelings tell us that somebody doesn't like us. Our feelings say that we failed. Our feelings say that we, you know, aren't received well. Our feelings say all these things. And, and, And we have things that contribute and trigger those things. But then what do we know? We know that we studied for that exam. We know that we studied our craft. We know that we strive for excellence in what we do. We know that, you know, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We know right. that, you know, we're the head and not the tail. We know all of these things, but then our feeling sometimes overrides what we know. Mm-hmm. And so um, my mother always used to say, your feelings will get you in trouble. <laughs> and Every so, time. So I always tell people to consider what you know, even if you don't feel like it. Consider what you know and lean into that, because oftentimes when the feeling fades, you have made a decision based upon a temporary feeling and caused a permanent problem. Yeah, that's good. Because, you know, even with me, you know, I get into my feelings sometimes and I have to go, hold up, hold up. Okay, one plus one equal two. You know, this is what I know, you know. Don't be over here whining and crying. That is not going to get me anywhere. No, it's not. 
And yeah, so because your feelings one plus one equals 15, and you're like, <laughs> mine and one plus one equals a thousand, the way I feel. <laughs> They catch me on the right night. That math might work. <laughs> That's some new algebra. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, but you know, it's it, and it. That's also uh, how I've had to uh, talk to myself in the mirror now. You know how you have to say, okay, now you know, vegetables are good for you, and that banana split is not going to help you in the end. <laughs> It's not going to be a contributing yeah. factor to what you really want. Yeah. You're good in the moment. Yeah, yeah. You'll get over it. It'll pass. <laughs> thousand calories. <laughs> and then I'll be all back in my feelings again. <laughs> feelings are the gift that keep giving. Whew. They are. Okay, so now I'm going to flip the script on you and ask what's the best advice you've ever received from someone? Really timely piece of advice that, that actually, um, I, I still hear it just as clearly as it was given to me when um, I experienced it. You know, I was the type of person, you know, I'd hear something somebody said or did not, don't get that quick side eye, what, what you mean? What? Ah, ah. <laughs> And I would just go. And um, I was at work at this particular time and I had a manager pull me aside. He says, what was that? And I said, well, he, did you hear what he said in that meeting? He came for me and he did a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm not going to take that. You know, you know, what I wouldn't go have when I wouldn't go have it and how I wasn't going to even receive it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, and, you know, I was young. And, you know, a firecracker and, you know, I'm going to prove to the world, you know, I'm right. Yeah. And he encouraged me. And I think it was the way he he actually positioned it for me. He said, well, what I would encourage you to think about is the fact that most people don't wake up with the intention of harming you. Mm -hmm. They don't wake up and say, I'm going to harm Norman. Yeah. You know. Try to put yourself in a place where you affirm that people are not trying to harm me. And what it will do is give you the ability to step back and listen for what's being said. And so it hit me a certain way. I mean, it hit real different. It wasn't like somebody told me, get over it. Yeah was like, wow, okay, you just gave me something that really like empowered me to control the way I think and the way I feel and the way I process. And, and I took that and applied it to what had just happened. And when I listened to what was said through that lens, I heard something completely different. Mm. And I was like, Oh, he wasn't trying to get at me. He was just basically saying this was this and this, you know, and and it had nothing to do with me. But I had grown up being defensive and I'd grown up, you know, and and, and for most black Americans, yeah, we we wake up, you know, on this earth in defense. Ready you know, to fight, yeah. We're already, we're already ready. So um, I think that was one of the best pieces of advice because now I can hear things. And even though they may sound a certain way, I can hear past that and get, oh, okay, that's what they're communicating to me. And my blood pressure's down here. <laughs> I've saved the juice on my eyeballs from me rolling them. I, I don't have to do all of that. I just... I can hear what I need to hear and everything else just falls aside because that's not important because sometimes people are not even aware that their delivery may be off, but what is it that they're trying to communicate? And so I take the position that, you know, this person's not trying to harm me. And even if they did have the ill intent, because I've taken that position and I control the narrative, they don't have the power. You know, I had a similar thing in grad school um 
being the oldest, like you say, I was always defensive as well, but I didn't, wasn't just defending me. I had three siblings and an aunt and three cousins to defend, you know? And so it's like, as soon as I hear something, I'm like, what? Who said what? Who did what? You know? And um, so that kind of carried with me as I grew older. And so in grad school, I was complaining once about how one instructor I felt wasn't giving us what we needed to learn for the money that we were paying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the other kids kind of, you know, you know how people move away from you, like they don't want to be associated with you anymore. And so they kind of left me out there in limbo. And then fast forward, some other students started realizing some things about something else. And then they called my name. Like, well, well, ask Patricia, she'll help us. No, no, that's not my fight, boo boo. <laughs> it's so like you. I had to just, you know, simmer down and, and listen to the whole story of what they were trying to battle. And I'm like, well, I, no, I don't feel that way about that. <laughs> Don't ask me anything. I'm over here in this lane, you know, but it's just funny how people think just because you might be upset or complaining about one little itty bitty thing. Now, all of a sudden you, you fighting and, and fussing and cussing by everything, you know, oh. but it's like you, I had to learn to narrow the words that I heard and focus on the context of what was being said right. and right. then that that makes all of my decisions now you know and then I also really hard I fail a lot but I try to see things from the other person's point of view mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then try to move forward right yeah, I did, and, and what I didn't have at that time was the ability to consider others, to consider all of the factors. You know, this man was under a tremendous amount of pressure. Yeah. We were on the call putting pressure on him. So yeah, his tone might have been a little left to center. Mm -hmm. But what was he trying to communicate and was it to harm me? No, it was, we need to get this done. And he was responding to, from my perspective, that I took as he was, he was, you know, pointing that at me when in actuality he was expressing to the room his concern. Yeah. And so when I can look through the eyes of empathy, God, he's got much bigger responsibility than I ever had at that particular time. And he has way more to lose than I did. Mm hmm. So if I were in that position, would I be yelling, screaming, and probably stomping on tables? I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it, it's hard. You know, uh, it, it, it took me a long time as well to get, to get there because being a Black female in America, it's, it's harder than people really realize. And everybody likes to uh, take the the realm of the person who goes through life the hardest. And I think people need to stop having a competition about that. But um, I'm not saying one suffers more than the other. That's just one group of people that suffer as well, you know? And so, uh, but as a black woman, we, have to be defensive sometimes a lot of times because many of us we don't have um, fathers around to defend us you know we don't have husbands to defend us and now our brothers are being killed in the street so you know you don't have your brothers to defend us so we have to defend ourselves you know and it's not an easy thing when you feel helpless and all alone in, in society. So yeah, people always, you know, they love to say, oh, oh, oh black women are loud. They love to fight. Well, if you would have been there for us, we wouldn't be fighting so damn much, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, and you it, have to always walk that line of, you know, like our, you know, VP nominee, you know? Yeah. 
tough, but then if I'm too tough, I'm an angry black woman. And then yes. if I'm forward, then I'm being aggressive, even though if I exhibit the same behavior as another person of another yes. persuasion, I'm criticized more for it. So then people that well, you're defensive. Well, <laughs> yep. just understand that you created this aura for me that is different from what you accept from others. And we were virtually doing the same the thing. Exact same thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's the way I felt in, in grad school, you know, our arguments were similar, but they took, Correct. you know, a defense to mine and hers was more welcome. Well, guess what? Uh, I don't feel that way on that, you know, completely. So I'm not a part of that fight, you know. And what, and that, and that obviously comes from, you know, implicit bias and, you know, yes. systemic things that come with that construct. And then, you know, um, I've had, in encouraging others to, to take a more positive slant on life, you know, it's like, well, you know, thinking positive doesn't solve problem and this, I said, well, yeah, what we're not trying to do is solve everything because we can't solve At everything. At all, no. But we have an obligation to the quality of our life. We have an obligation to ourselves if we want to stay here on this planet longer mm -hmm. to be able to manage what is within us to be able to function in what's going on. Because yeah. as we are working, I want to be here live to see the change. I don't want to be so stressed out that I'm gone and don't even get to see it. I mean, we're doing all this fighting for what? Yeah. <laughs> for me here <laughs> exactly right you know it, it, it's 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 that is the truth and my thing is you know people love to you know just go in and yell at the head of the pyramid well you didn't do no yelling down here you didn't do no yelling and helping right here and you ain't do shit right here you know and now you want to go straight to the top when you could have avoided all of this by doing your part right down here. Doing the work. And so, and then it starts with ourselves because if each, if, if each and every one of us regulate our own selves. Well, that's what I mean down here. You ain't, yeah. 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 What, what, what do we do? You know, what do, what's happening out here? If we're all regulating, self-regulating, we're not creating the conflicts. Yes. And so even if conflict is coming my way, if I manage myself and right. I control my narrative, I am changing the atmosphere. And mm -hmm. so, I, it, and it's a process. I don't win every day at that. <laughs> None <laughs> of us do, you know, yeah. but, but again, the awareness of it helps, you know, yeah. and the working toward the goal to make it, more uh controllable you know and more noticeable within yourself that before like i had to post how upset i was how ups didn't deliver my my box on time with my book in it and i had to drive down to go get my own book <laughs> and the lady inside said job security now, let me tell you how Jesus and the 12 disciples had to help me <laughs> not go to jail. So you see, I, I had to, sometimes you just gotta bow your head. <laughs> Close your eyes. And just go, ooh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. <laughs> I was exactly. like, Have a good day. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I I felt good in that moment that I didn't let that woman make me go there. You know what I mean? So I just got in the car, I say, okay, I got my book, just turn on my little music and drive home. Right. I was able to get my book. That's all I wanted. Happy. That's it. I took a few extra steps, but that's what I got. I got it. And somewhere somehow all of this was a lesson and a reason i just haven't figured it out yet but it all worked better for my good 
<laughs> exactly. Well, sometimes our flexibility is put to the test. How flexible are you? How, how much did you want that book? So, yeah. Yeah. So I, what I've just had to do, sometimes you just, you have to surrender and, and surrendering doesn't mean let people run you over. doesn't yeah. mean let circumstances, you know, get the best of you. But I think overall, it's just like you said, the awareness, that's the real big word there is just being aware. And when you're aware, you can manage things. Okay, well, you know what? I can see where that person made that mistake. And okay, it wasn't what I wanted to happen. And no, I'm disappointed that that happened, but I get it. Yeah. Now I'm in a different place. I'm not, hmm, idiot. <laughs> you know, I'm not in negative spewing space. Because, That's a nicer word that yeah. I would have used, but yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, this is television. No, but <laughs> <laughs> might be a family show. No, yeah. but uh, <laughs> no, but I realized that I, 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 my quality of life is a whole lot better when I'm in that space. Yeah, I, I can move it's that. It's true. Yeah. And a lot of times I have to just say, you know, apparently somewhere, somebody, somewhere else put this person in a bad mood or whatever. And it's not my fault, but I'm just the face that they see or whatever. And I just go on. And sometimes I'll say it's been a rough day. You know, sometimes if you can cleverly mm -hmm. say a one liner, it'll change the whole demeanor of a person, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what I try to be aware of as well. You know, sometimes, you know, somebody who's having a rough day just wants somebody to be in agreement with them. And I'll just go, it's been a rough day for me too. And then they'll just fall out laughing, you know, and then boom, it's right. all, you know, a, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, even if they don't respond well, you know, I brought my energy to this space. I remember Oprah um, when she had uh, this particular show and she talked about the sign that she had in her dressing room. Um, and it was one of the guests that said, you are responsible for the energy you bring into a space. Yeah. And that hit me like, whoa, that's like, wow, you know, um, wow, I own this energy that I bring into a space and I'm responsible for it. Yeah. So if I come in reckless, I am responsible for spoiling the energy in this room or changing and shifting this in a way that could work for somebody who could work. You know, I'm responsible for the good energy. I'm responsible for the not so good energy. So that helped me think about things. Didn't mean I always did it, but, you know, but it, it, it created an awareness that I could then use to say, okay, well, Norman, you're in control of yourself. Norman, you're in control of your emotions. You're in control of your thoughts. You know what? Okay, I'm about to go into this space and I'm not really having a good day, but I need to change my energy because I'm responsible for the people in that room and I do not want to ruin their, in their space. And I don't want to be the cause of turning their day sour. And yeah. so it helps you get yourself together. So then when you walk in, you good. Yeah. It's funny you say that because there are certain people I can clearly picture how they are when I enter the room. Like my uncle, when I go home to Texas and if I, as soon as I hit the door, we know it's going to be a lot of laughing and crying. And they go, hey, you see because we laugh until tears roll down our faces and we're bent over. Okay. And it's another group of people. When I enter the room, they know, okay, we can ask Patricia because she's going to know, you know, they know I'm a problem solver. And then you have another group of people. They know I, I'll just sit there in silence if they need to talk, you know, so you're right about that. There's different energies that you bring wherever you go and you know that that is that is absolutely true yeah and and the, the and the thing is i think a lot of times we don't acknowledge how powerful we are mm -hmm. 
and that, that we true. can do damage if we're not careful. It's just like a young person with a car. Yeah. You know, that pep talk we give the young people when you get a car. Okay, use this responsibly because if you're reckless with it, it can be a weapon. Yes. So something that we enjoy and we love and we, we cherish can be a weapon. Mm -hmm. And so if we misuse it, and so our own bodies, our own energy, our own, you know, mouth, mouth I mean, can, can bring life or and can death. create a huge problem in death yes. of people. Because when I think about things that have been said to me over the course of the years, I'm like, wow, who would say something like that to a person? And, and I have to say, it affected me yeah. and it took me time to get over what was said to me. And so I'm really just like, you know, when I pray every day, I'm like, please let me use all of my being to bring good into the world and that I don't create a problem for people with my mouth or I don't create. And, and, and when I say that, not saying that when we need to speak against the ills of society, we're being silent. Right. I'm talking about tearing people down. Right. Our powerful voices, our powerful words, because our words do have power. And, and so, if, yeah, and I was going to say, and if we really understood how powerful we were and how we create with our energy and our words, we would act a lot differently. Yeah. And you know, what's the sad part is the person who said those things to you, they knew that they had the stronger energy. And that's the sad part. They knew it would affect you. Yeah. And that's, why I try to, like you say, when we try, when you try to, to better yourself and get into energy and spirit with yourself first, mm -hmm. then, you know, you start learning how to block out all that right. negative energy and all those things that people try to say to you that they know that will disturb you and distract you and try to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, you know, I just work on me, you know, I, I just now I'm really focusing on working on me. And, and when that stuff come, I get my little badminton and just swing and hit it back. I hit it back, take right. it back. You know, I don't want it. Exactly. And, and, and it's also a lesson. Um, and one of the things because I, I love helping people and I love sharing and Sometimes I overshare and I'm just thinking I'm helping you. And then yeah. what happens, you know, I've given people pieces of information and then they you take it and use it against you. And then you're like, whoa, you did that? But yeah. you know, what I realize is that you can't trust everybody with everything. And you're thinking you're being, you know, transparent and helpful. And you know, so um, you know, my mother and I have this saying, go get your life back. Uh, Donald Lawrence wrote a song called Go Get Your Life Back. And it's just one of those things where it's like sometimes you just go out and collect all the pieces of yourself that you went and spread out everywhere. Yeah. Gather it back. <laughs> and then, you know, rebuild and heal you and then go back out into the world cautiously. Right. And that's where I pray more than anything is now for discernment because you're right. People will try and use you and get information out of you and and you go to sleep and wake up and they didn't use it against you. And I'm like, what the hell happened? I've yeah. been here, you know? Right, right. And, oh, yeah. you know, it's just the misuse of energy and the misuse of information. And, and you know, and, and, and yeah, they, they think they have the power, but at the end of the day, as long as I'm aware yeah. and as long as I'm seeking to elevate my own spirit, right? no one has the power over me but right. me. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's why I say when you work on yourself and you work on discernment and you, you, you meditate and you pray and, or you do whatever you need to do to oh. get your own mind right, then oh. you know that there's nobody out there that has all these negative energies and powers over you. Only you can condemn you. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, oh. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you've had me laughing and teary-eyed and now, you know, in a uh, 
meditative state and all this stuff. I just been all full circle with you. Well, you know, and then what I love about, you know, the fact that we met on social media, I know. Uh, you know, I, I love and appreciate your sense of humor, um, you know, and then it, you, you're able to meet people Thank that you. you may not have had history with, but you find things that are you're in common with. And then when you spend time like this to even talk, you find out you have even more in common than you thought. Yes, exactly. Because I, but just thank you. Cause you know, I, I have, I used to be a stand up comedian, but before that, everybody in my family has this amazing sense of humor. And yeah. so uh, when people get my humor, then you, you pretty cool. Yeah. I come from a long line of crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> Good crazy. <laughs> that is my word. I'm a good crazy. So leave me be. I'm good yes. crazy. <laughs> if we're not laughing, something's wrong. That part right there. Right. Because if, I mean, if you fall, slip and fall, and you're not hurt, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is material for years to come, and you won't live it down. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm going to remember where we are, what you had on. <laughs> yes. And we're going to talk about it every time we get together. <laughs> every family reunion. <laughs> yeah, that's my cousin. That's my uncle and aunts. We just get together and cut up and it's, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. That that's, that's exactly how I am with my uncle and aunts and, you know, people, we need oxygen when we all get together because we can't yes. breathe. Yes. That's how we clown and cut up. So exactly. I, I can identify. So yeah. Kindred spirit. Yes, yes. Well, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedule. And I'm sorry that the pandemic is going on, that you can't be on an airplane somewhere, even though I think you might find a way or figure out how to get on one. I uh, you know, I'll slip out. As long as Delta <laughs> fog in a plane, I, I might slip. <laughs> and give your dog a hug for me for letting him be alone while you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I will give Alex your regards. Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you for being here. And I will talk to you next time. All right. You take care. Take care. So I want to thank Mr. Norman Lee for being my guest today. We had such a wonderful time. It was so awesome to talk to him, my wonderful social media Facebook friend. And I want to thank you for joining me tonight as well. Please remember to like and share. Also hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time on Ask Aunt Trisha.